She kisses him, he remembers. It's as if his past lives come flooding back to him, much like when we remember who we are by knowing all is love. Welcome to another episode of True Love Talks. Today I have a special treat based on some of the comments that I have been seeing. Quite a few of you have asked why they fake these events, so I will tell you. And this is going to be quite an extensive video, so I'm going to break it into two parts. So there will be a bonus episode tomorrow. Consider it a Christmas present. <laughs> it's been quite a journey. I did not think that I would make it to the end. So thank you for coming along this journey with me. And once again, I've really enjoyed reading all your comments and shared experiences. It's been really nice seeing some familiar names and some new names. So I hope you continue to do this in the future. If you have enjoyed this series, please consider showing your support for my channel. Like, share, subscribe, contribute. Any contributions over $15 will receive the Dark Shadows companion piece, so please include your email so I can send you the link and password. Also remember I have a Discord group, a website, and two other channels to explore. I will leave links to everything in the description box. So this video is a follow-up to my JFK video because so many of you have asked why these types of events are fake. You've asked why they would traumatize people. Why would they put these fake events on the world stage? One of the other questions to ask is why fake them when they could make them real? So this explanation that I'm about to present, it will trigger people. If you're not ready for this information, it will trigger you. I'm going to do my best to explain things carefully and concisely. I am going to do my best to explain any possible cognitive dissonance you might come up against. But as with any truth, you have to want the truth to see it. So if you come across cognitive dissonance, if you get triggered at any point, you might want to take a break and come back to it later. You might want to make sure that you have an open mind in receiving this information because cognitive dissonance comes up against a firmly held belief that you are unwilling to let go of. In order to see the truth, you're going to need to release that belief. And if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. That's your choice. I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to present the truth and it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to proceed with that information. It's up to you to see it. I can't make you see it. All I can do is present it to you. I am merely the messenger. Please be kind. If you get triggered and you get upset, take your anger elsewhere. Deal with it. And then when you've calmed down and you're able to process this information, then you can come back and digest the rest. So I say this with kindness and love so that you can receive this information because it is the truth. So there are things that you are going to have to relinquish. There are things you're going to have to accept. I'm saying this because you asked and I'm saying this because I know. How do I know this? I have been breaking down these events for three years. I have been exposing the fakery in the news. I have been breaking down film and television and songs for three years and exposing the codes and the fakery. So this, combined with my years of experience working in film and television production, has exposed me to the inner workings of Hollywood and how these productions are made. There are people out there who are shills, who will show you gematria, shills who will show you that these events are fake, but they won't go past that point. It's up to you to go past that point. There are people out there who will show you the codes, I don't know of anybody else who's putting this information that I'm about to present out there. I have presented all this information before in all my various videos in the past three years, but this is the first time that I am putting it all in one video. Since my Venus video in 2020, I have explained why these events are fake. They are fake because they have to be. So first of all, it's important to factor in that this world is not physical. It's metaphysical. It's a dream. It's created in the mind. It's a consciousness creation. If you do not understand what this means, then I suggest you do some research into understanding it. 
I have spoken about this in many of my videos and there are plenty of sources that can help you with this. And this aspect is beyond the scope of this video. The reason it is important to know that all is mind is because this world is subject to your perception and your perception is affected by your beliefs. Surely you must know this simply by the fact that you once believed certain things to be true only to later discover that it was a complete lie. And once your perception changed, certain truths were revealed to you. The fact that you can look at a CGI image and know that it's CGI while someone else sees a photograph proves to you that things are subject to your perception. That people do not see what is there, they are seeing what they are told to see. This is a result of brainwashing or mind control. This is the real MK Ultra, not that nonsense that the CIA released. Most people are satisfied with an answer, any answer, but it doesn't even have to answer the question they asked. This is how politicians and controlled opposition get away with the nonsense that they do. Truth or Shills will provide you with an answer to your questions so you don't have to do the research yourself but shills do not care about giving you the truth. Their job is to control the dissemination of the truth. They offer you clues to lead you in the right direction with a little bit of truth, but you have to do the rest because the truth is earned. It's only for the people who are meant to find it. There are several answers that these shills will give you as to why the elites put these events on. Some of those answers are to keep us in fear so we do as we're told to keep us distracted in the matrix mind, to keep us afraid of the boogeyman, and to extract our energy and attention to pay homage to certain pagan gods in an open ritual sacrifice. These are just a few of the answers that they provide. And to some extent, they're all true, but it doesn't answer the question as to why. Why do they put on these traumatizing hoax events? And why are they fake? To get better answers, we need to ask the right question. And we need to consider, does it actually answer the question that I've asked? And more importantly, is it true? You have to want the truth to find it. Many people will rely on shills even when they know that these people are shills. Mainly they rely on shills because that's all they have, or they're too lazy to do their own research, or they trust them because they gave the truth about some things and yeah, they lied about this, but surely they're not lying about that. There's a lot of information to sift through as you come to the truth. But as I've said in a previous video, once you start to recognize the patterns, you don't need answers to every single fake event. The pattern shows you the proof. On my backup channel, I break down many of these events. Most of the events on the news are fake. Celebrity deaths by the numbers, and the more dramatic the better. Murders, suicides, serial killers, car crashes, overdoses of anyone in the public eye are largely fake. Any major event that is hyped year after year, fake. Any event that's milked in the media, fake. Any event that is commemorated, fake. Any event that has documentaries and Hollywood movies made about it, fake. Books written about it, fake. Interviews of survivors on television, fake. Any event in which they catch the culprit immediately and know every single detail about the crime and publish it to the masses? Fake. These are just some of the markers of fake events. And what do I mean by fake? I mean they're staged. It's a performance. It didn't happen the way they told us that it did. Nobody died. Nobody got hurt. The whole thing was a movie. Some of the things I'm about to tell you might shock you. Some of the more famous events that fall into this category Obviously the JFK assassination, as I just covered that. Similar assassinations like Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln, Marilyn Monroe, John Lennon, the Manson murders, Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, Carla Homolka and Paul Bernardo, James Bulger, Sarah Everard, Myra Hindley, Jack the Ripper, Princess Diana, Paul Walker, James Dean, Grace Kelly, Anne Heche, Twitch, Michael Hutchins, Whitney Houston, Kurt Cobain, 9-11, Oklahoma City bombing, Manchester bombing, Las Vegas shooting, Waco, Texas, Beirut explosion, the World War II atomic bomb, the Holocaust, Ukraine war, Titanic, the Lindbergh baby, Al Capone, John Dillinger, Bonnie and Clyde, just to name a few. And this is just in the last hundred years. It's likely that you're already in denial over some of these events, but if you examine them, their stories follow the same patterns and the stories will fall apart if you look at them with a critical eye. Surely all these events weren't fake before film and TV. 
Yes, they were. In the above list, I included several events that happened off camera. I could go back centuries, but I only covered the last century. Okay, so now you know that most events in the news are staged and you have some indicators to help you in what to look for. The next question is why? The better question to ask is, if the elites control everything and it's generally understood in conspiracy circles that they hate us and want to kill us, then why bother faking these events? Surely it's more trouble than it's worth to stage something like a bombing than it is to actually do it. Of course it is. So what does this tell you about the events and about the elite? It's bad enough that we once thought these events were real, but to then realize that they were never real and they were all staged like entertainment designed to traumatize us and keep us in fear is horrific. So why are they fake? They're fake because they have to be. Well, why do they have to be fake? Let me backtrack a bit to get into understanding the elites because if we understand their role in all this, it helps to explain why they do what they do. Let me list off some fundamental assumptions that are made about the elites. They are part of the ruling class known as the 13 families. They are inverts, androgynes, hermaphrodites, trans. They worship Baal, Satan, Saturn, Baphomet. They perform ritual sacrifices. They are evil baby-eating, blood-drinking demons. They are reptilians. They are blue bloods. They hate humans. They are jealous of our creative powers and have to suppress us. They control the entire world. We are slaves to them. They are poisoning us, dumbing us down, and trying to kill us. They lied to us about everything and mock us in plain sight. They tell us the truth to relieve them of karma, so that if we believe it, they told us the truth, and we're dumb enough to fall for it. They are part of the Illuminati, and the Freemasons are their minions. They know the truth and have to release the truth as part of karma. Celebrities sold their soul to the devil and served Satan in exchange for money. There's a lot more, but this gives you a good idea of the answers that we're given about the elite. And the picture that we are given about the elite is that they are human-hating, evil baby killers, so they would not only have no qualms about killing innocent people in these events to traumatize people, but they would delight in it. They would live for it. So this presents a massive hole in the story as to who the elites are and why these events are staged. Once again, there is truth to some of these claims, but not all of them. Much of this is just a show. I don't have time to go into all of them for the scope of this video, but it is important to understand which ones are true and which ones are not. At this point, I will leave you to decide which ones are which. The general idea is that if everything that is rumored of the elites is true, why tell us about their private pedo, blood drinking, baby eating, Satan worshiping rituals? Them telling us about it does not alleviate them of any repercussions because we are not participating in it. Them telling us does not warrant us to take any action against them. What are we supposed to do about it? After all, they control everything and we are merely slaves. All this does is serve to paint the picture that the elites are evil, so we make them the enemy. The elites lie to us and they hold the truth, and yet the truth is simultaneously evil? That makes no sense. The elites hold the truth, but the truth cannot be kept from us because the truth is within. The sheer number of shills and controlled opposition proves that not only was the truth released on purpose, but it was also released by the elites. So if the truth cannot be hidden from us, then why do they need to tell us the truth? The elites do not need to tell us the truth. They want to tell us the truth. Consider this. It's generally accepted in conspiracy circles that the world is run by satanic elite pedos who have enslaved us in a matrix system and they are controlled by reptilian masters. Okay, if this is true, then where is our chance at getting free? We've been presented with about three or four options here. According to the Christians, all we need to do is believe in Jesus. He will save us. Put on the full armor of God. Okay, but isn't the matrix system a soul recycler when we just come back here and have to do it all over again and again that puts us in a slave position expecting someone outside of ourselves to save us if jesus was going to save us why did he allow this horror show in the first place why doesn't he come down here and save us now how is he going to save us how is believing in jesus 
going to change anything. Another commonly held truth is that we are the creators and the elites are jealous of our abilities, so they suppress us with lies and poison us to dumb us down. With everything that's happened since 2020, this should prove that people need no help in dumbing them down. Most people are dumb in that they do not think for themselves. The elite have always controlled the world. There was never a time when this wasn't so. So if that's the case, how did we, as powerful creators, become enslaved as mere workers and stay here for thousands of years? If the elites hate us and are simultaneously afraid of us, why don't they just kill us? Because they control everything and it would be very easy to do so. The answer we get is because they need our creative ability. Okay, so then if this is true, then what are we creating as a result of their manipulations? They need us to serve them, so they keep us controlled by fear and dumbing us down so we don't know who we are. The trouble with this argument is that once we are aware that we are creator gods, we cannot stay slaves at the mercy of the elite. So why are we not creating our way out of this mess? Why are we still looking at the elite's system to solve the problems of the system? If you are a powerful creator, then why are you pointing a finger at the evil elites instead of looking to yourself to find a solution for a better world? Well, this is because they have stolen the knowledge and we forgot how to use it. If we forgot and the knowledge was stolen, then how can the elites use it to their advantage? Because they stole the knowledge and they use it for themselves, then they use our creative energy to manifest. Manifest what? What are we manifesting? If they stole the knowledge and we don't have it, what do they need us for? If we're powerful creators and our power is stolen because they have the knowledge and we don't remember who we are, then what are they afraid of? See, you can't have it both ways. Another offered solution is that we are to focus on love and light and ignore the evil in the world. The New Age and David Icke give us the solution to just raise our frequency. So we raise our frequency in order to avoid our energy harvest. The flaw in this argument is that the chakra system was allegedly implanted in us by our reptilian overlords so they could harvest our energy. Well, if that's the case, why would they allow us the ability to override the system? If they implanted the chakra system within us, doesn't that make these reptilian overlords our creators? Are they the gods? These shills give us answers, but they don't answer the question. This is the end of part one. If you're enjoying this series, please show your support for my channel. Like, share, comment, subscribe, contribute. Visit my website, Discord group, or my other two channels. Thank you for watching. Tune in tomorrow for part two. Have a Merry Christmas. Bye for now.